The views and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story Living with Lupus Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join me on this last day of March, Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. In today's episode, you'll hear the latest in healthcare news, which involves a physician who became famous on TikTok for dancing. That's right. This physician has allegedly been accused of sexual assault. Also, you will hear from a makeup artist, a mother, an advocate, an entrepreneur, a public speaker, and the list goes on and on. I'll be talking to Loopy Lotus about her journey of living with lupus. So, you know what I want you to do. That's right. All the way from the United States to Nairobi, Kenya. Get ready to grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, and to my listeners late at night. Now you know I appreciate you. So get ready to grab your favorite glass of wine while I grab my favorite cup of tea. And come on and join the conversation right here on my story. Living with Lupus Podcast. The Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendricks Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness. Giving hope and empowering those who suffer with chronic illness. See one, reach one, educate one to empower the masses. You can contact the foundation at 313-303-9217 or visit their website at H-T-T-P-S colon forward slash forward slash C-E-M-P-H foundation dot com. This is a 501 C3 organization. No one should live in lack. All contributions are tax deductible. All right, thank you for joining me. This is the latest in healthcare news. You know, I told you earlier about a physician who has allegedly been accused of sexual assault. That's right, Dr. Jason Campbell became famous on TikTok for dancing. Now, He has been placed on administrative leave by the University of Florida's Teaching Hospital 
following allegedly sexual assault charges and an investigation by his former employer. Campbell and that employer, Oregon Health and Science University, better known as OHSU, have been sued for sexual assault by an employee, among other charges, with a complaint filed February the 26th in federal court. Campbell is accused of physically assaulting the plaintiff, sending sexual texts and images to her mobile phone, and posting sexually charged social media messages when he was a resident at OHSU. Now, the plaintiff in this case is not named and is identified only as an employee of the VA Medical Center in Portland, where the events allegedly took place. OHSU, a Portland teaching hospital that supplies residents to the VA hospital, stands accused of retaliating against the plaintiff and failing to meet requirements in handling reported sexual assaults. The complaint charges that it has a history of downplaying sexual assault. Its environment is one in which sexual misconduct is permitted. Now, officials' charges levied against both Campbell and OHSU include sexual assault, battery, inflicting severe emotional distress, and invasion of privacy. The plaintiff has requested a trial by jury seeking $4.5 million from Campbell and OHSU and $40.5 million in punitive damages from Campbell. Now, Campbell gained some social media fame by dancing in popular TikTok videos throughout the pandemic. Now, the plaintiff allegedly revealed Campbell's behavior to Esther Cho, MD, MPH. Now, MPH is Masters in Public Health. Now, Esther Cho is an OHSU emergency medicine professor and a founding member of Times Up Healthcare, a nonprofit that counters sexual misconduct in the workplace. But Chu did not report Campbell's behavior as per her duty, the suit alleges. Chu could not be reached for comment via OHSU or Time's Up. Now, Campbell allegedly texts the plaintiff a picture of his private area. He later came up behind her and thrust his private area against her backside. The um, plaintiff stated, don't ever surprise me by getting in my physical space. The plaintiff wrote to him. Campbell responded, 
I should have asked. I'm sorry. Campbell said he was trying to hug the plaintiff, according to the complaint. Now, my question is, why are they that comfortable that they can act like that towards one another? I'm not saying that the plaintiff did, you know, this did not occur, but that was the first thing that entered my mind. Why does he have your phone number? Why is he comfortable texting you explicit messages and pictures? Why is he comfortable coming behind you and getting that close to your backside? Now, to me, if that had been me, I would have knocked him out and told him, no, we don't do that here. But everyone is different. And I'm not saying that this plaintiff did not act in that manner. I'm just saying in my mind that I'm letting it out. Why does he feel that comfortable doing that to her? The plaintiff reported Campbell to her supervisors on April the 9th, 2020, sharing the lewd messages. Campbell and his supervisors were soon informed of the complaint. Campbell reported to residency director Emily Baird, M.D., that he had fallen into a woman, quote, and was under investigation. Baird, despite being a mandatory reporter, took no action on Dr. Campbell's confession. When we return, we'll hear more. So stick with me. If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. And we're back. Now, on April 17th, the plaintiff submitted a written report to OHSU. And OHSU conducted the investigation and released findings on August 17th. Campbell had violated its policies and code of conduct by repeatedly sending electronic messages of a sexual nature to the plaintiff, including and not limited to a picture of his private area and approaching plaintiff from behind in her office at the VA Medical Center and pressing his front side against her backside without express or implied consent, it found. The review did not address potential violations of law or civil liability, according to the complaint. Its investigator did oh, excuse me, did not interview the other alleged victim, nor Campbell's supervisor. The suit also alleges that Campbell had sexually assaulted an OHSU student and employee previously. The plaintiff claims she was also the victim of serial sexual harassment by another OHSU employee, former emergency medicine chair, Oscar 
John Ma, MD, from June 20, uh, 2017 to October 2018. Now, OHSU declined to say whether it's recommended Campbell or shared any details of its review with the University of Florida or its hospital. OHSU noted that, in general, it honors reference requests, which includes a disclosure of policy violations when appropriate. A spokesperson told the Oregonian, now, the newspaper reported that OHSU signed a confidential separation agreement with Campbell, according to the attorney who filed the complaint. So, this is in quotations, so we can only presume it was not OHSU who notified the University of Florida of Dr. Campbell's violations. The Florida hospital placed Campbell on leave upon learning of the investigation. The Oregonian reported citing a spokesperson's comments that it had, quote, recently learned of Campbell's alleged misconduct. Campbell was not reported to the board. What do you guys think of that? You know, they didn't report him to the board, to the Oregon Medical Board. What do you think of that? A license belonging to a Jason Lynell Campbell working at OHSU expired July the 31st, according to the board. There are no current or prior board orders or agreements on file for this licensee. The state record shows OHSU did not report Campbell to the state because no report was required under the Medical Practices Act. A spokesperson, excuse me, emailed the Oregonian. Now, OHSU declined to talk to MedPage today where I'm getting this information from. Instead, emailing a statement on Tuesday, OHSU does not condone behavior as described in the lawsuit. We are continuously working to evolve our culture policies and practices to provide an environment where all learners, employees, patients, and visitors feel safe and welcome. End of quote. quote. Now, OHSU cannot comment on pending litigation. Quote, we take our role seriously in being part of the change that needs to happen across our country to end discrimination and power dynamics that allow for harassment. Neither Campbell nor Chu respond to requests from MedPage today for comment. So, what are your thoughts of this? Let me know. You could leave me a voice message. I would truly be interested in hearing from you. Stay tuned. Up next, the conversation with Loopy. Lotus. Well, I'm back and I thank you for joining me. Now, 
You remember I told you in the first part of this episode that I was going to have a mother, a makeup artist, entrepreneur, a public speaker, an advocate, and that this individual does not let her condition stop her from reaching the height of her game. Now, I have online Loopy Lotus, and thank you so much for joining me today on My Story Living with Lupus to tell your story and your journey of living with this chronic illness. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you know, as I told you, everybody, she nervous. And I don't know why she has to be nervous. But tell her to get out of her nerves and go ahead and tell her story like nobody else can. Because we all have a story. And if we don't tell our stories ourselves... That means someone else will tell the story and put their spin to our life. So go ahead, Loopy Lotus, and tell your story. Uh, okay, so um, I, I I didn't know that I had the lupus uh, until after the death of my youngest son. I, I experienced extreme as, as one could imagine, uh, I was that because I had just lost my baby and he was seven weeks old. Um, I, that point in my life is sort of blurry, <laughs> but I, I remember the being sick a lot, and I, I went through a lot of mental distress. Now, my, my, my mom has lupus. She has this boy's lupus. And at the time, she didn't notice symptoms, but it it sort of took her away from the thinking lupus because growing up, I, I would get sick a lot, and she would take me to the doctor and, and get me tested. We ran all types of tests because, as you know, there's no one test that can determine whether you have lupus. So. I was constantly getting tested because my mom wanted to, to catch it early, so to speak. And um, we we never caught it when I was a child. I just I would have problems with my endocrine system, and um, I, I I would oh my god! I actually this is so embarrassing. I actually wet myself well up into my teen years. And I would get whipped as a younger because we ne- never knew why why it was going on. So I would be getting a lot of trouble for wetting myself, knowing how to go to the restroom, you know. Um, and, and throughout the years, just small things that you tend to ignore would happen. And at, at that point where stress became a factor, that's when the symptoms were really hit, you know. Um, so I, I played it off some more and, and kept pushing it backwards. But my mom would constantly say, I, I want you to go and see a doctor and get tested. I want you to go to, to a rheumatologist, check it out, see you, you, it seems like you may have it, Dad, and I have it, so you need to check it out. And I would be like, you know. That, that's not my story. That's your story. You the one who <laughs> went <laughs> And, and, and um, I, I kept on putting it off, especially after dealing with such a traumatic experience with my son's passing. So I, I moved. I, I left my small hometown of America, Georgia, and I, I moved to Atlanta where I began to to work in the, in the entertainment industry, uh, working as a, a production 
workers doing makeup and, and hair for, for different productions. So I would work on these sets the long hours, and I, I would travel back and forth some everywhere. To Chicago, I, I've done Fashion Week in, in New York City. Uh, it, it, I was just traveling, you know, and it, that was on my body, but I was still ignoring it. I, I was saying, well, this isn't fatigue. It's, this is just, I, I've been working, and, and anybody that's going to ha have a hustle, you got to work, and, and, and you get tired, so that's okay. So I would push the, that kind of stuff to the side, and the turning point was at the time we we were living, myself, my son, and he, his father, we were living in a, a hotel, a, a rundown hotel in Atlanta, and I was a bit promiscuous, to say the least, at, at that time in my life, uh, dealing with my, my stress in a, a very toxic way, and I, I had me a little, little side piece. <laughs> And me and this guy who was out on a date, and we we were enjoying ourselves in the sun. This this was my first experience with UV sensitivity, mm -hmm. and we we had to be outside maybe fifteen minutes, and all all of a sudden I, I felt this rush of fire just it, it felt like it, it was in flames through through my veins mm -hmm. and I, I, I just remember screaming i was i was in so much pain and it it itched it itched really bad and i couldn't it, it's like no matter how much i scratched I, I could not stop the itching and i i was scratching and scratching and screaming and scratching and the guy at the time that I was seeing he goes what's wrong and I'm like it's burning it burns it burns and I'm, I'm screaming so he, he rushes me back to my child's dad which we were still in a relationship we were living together but he, he didn't know what else to do he rushed me back home and, and he goes Man, I don't know what happened to her. I, I ain't doing that. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> and my my child's father is like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm itching. Please help me. Help me. Like, I, I couldn't, no matter what we did, it, it didn't help. Mm -hmm. My child tried to rub lotion on me. It made it burn worse. Mm -hmm. but everything we did, it, it, nothing helped. That was my, my turning point. I, I was like, call my mom. Before I got it out, my child dad had, had already just dialed the number. And my mom could hear me screaming in the background. So she's just like, what happened to her? What's going going on? And immediately I, I screamed, mom, help me. Please help me. I, I'm itching so bad. And at this point, tears of tears are running down my eyes. I, did, I didn't know what to do. That was the turning point. And I could hear, you know how you hear certain things? Right. You can hear what's going on around you. I could hear, I could hear my society talking to, to my main man. I could hear <laughs> my main man talking to my mom. And they're all so frustrated. And at that point, I realized that I put myself in a very unhealthy situation by not going to check out to see if maybe that was the issue, but I also put them in a in a place of distress. Yeah. And that, that, that's when it clicked to me. And I heard my mom telling my child that she, she has lupus. I, I, I really think she got lupus, Jody. Please convince her to go get it checked out. She got to, to be seen about. And, and I, I heard all of this going on, you know. And, and so she finally told him what to do for me. And they got me in a tub. 
of a cool water, and that's that's where it started calming. Is that just that cool water started calming that fiery sensation? Mm-hmm. And, um, she walked in through the steps of how to get me calm. We turned the lights out. I had to lay down, and that, like it surprised me that that worked. And it that's how it clicked. Like I I gotta be seen. I got got to see what's going on. Even if Mama's not right, I need to know what this is. And um, that was the turning point. But you know what? It was April when I finally got the diagnosis. And my mom's birthday is in April. Mm -hmm. So when I called her, I called her crying. And I I was like, I I don't want to come around for your birthday. And and I, I was sort of mad at her, but not feeling like she gave me lupus because that's the thing she and I always had that discussion because she has lupus and that's, so it wasn't that it, it was just that I was so disappointed in myself that when when you deal with a chronic illness, and I'm sure you know this it is stressful for you but, but Noticing the, the stress that it takes on on your loved ones is is even even harder to it's a hard, harder concept to deal with. You know Knowing that. You know I don't mean to cut you off, but you are so correct. And when you talk about the itching, I remember running home from school one day and had to stop. And get up against something because I was itching all over. And when I finally got home, I was telling my mama, I said, Mama, 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 please help me. I said, I'm itching all over and don't know what I got into. And she said, were you into any um, poison ivy or did you go outside on recess and was in the sun too long? And I told her I was in the sun too long. And she put me in a bath of cool water to calm it down. Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's amazing what, what healing properties water has. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's amazing. And it, it was, like I said, that was a turning point for me. But even after the diagnosis, you know, you could go through the stages of being diagnosed mm-hmm. where you go go through a denial stage you know and I, I definitely went through that I, I mean I was in my early 20s at the time I, I just turned to 30 March 10th so you know I, I was still in, in a state a mind state where I, I felt I felt as if something had, had been taken from me and I, I felt like I, I was going to take it back so to speak so, <laughs> I, I, the first the first few years, I wasn't listening to no doctors or anything uh, like that. I, I was drinking, it, even though they told me that, that my kidneys were swollen and then that, that may have been some of the reasons for the, the problems I had when I was younger. Like, I, I ignored it all because I was in denial. I, I kept I kept my medicine in my underwear drawer uh, underneath the, the pair of underwear I, I knew I never wore for years, and I, I would get the prescription and then never take the med because I, I was I was in denial, you know. So I I just felt I, I felt. Like I said, I, I felt like something was taken from me. I, I, I almost want to say that I, I felt defiled in, in a way. You, because I, I felt like I, my life was just beginning and all of a sudden, here comes a, another storm storm. Because I don't want to use profanity. <laughs> But, but that's what it felt like. I, I had just lost my son, and I, I thought I was 
starting over when I moved and, and got into my career and, and was a- actually building on my career and doing well, you know? And then all of a sudden, and now here's something else. So... But, um, but you know, that's, I, that's, uh, I think... The, the, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think the majority of us who think we have our lives all planned out and then boom, there's a crook in the road that we're supposed to go through for a purpose. And what that purpose may be for me is different than the purpose is for you. But one thing, you know, I sit back and I watch you on social media and <laughs> I look at you and I I concentrate on you. I look at your eyes, look at your smile, and I concentrate on you and I see what you're doing. And when I see you smile, your smile brightens up my heart when I think that I'm having a rough day and I see your smile and it just does something to my soul. And I watch you, how you are doing different things things and I say she never stops she never gives up she keeps going <laughs> and that's what I like about you in spite of having lupus in spite of having the underlying condition I look at you and I've had some um down days But I go to your page and I look at your smile and it just picks me up. You are a blessed soul and don't, I don't, I can't say you don't know it, but right now you don't realize the joy that you give not only to me. But to other people, I like positive people. And you are so positive in everything you do. I know you're not crying on me. You better not be crying on me now. You bet not. Come on now, Loopy Lotus. I had to tell that's, you that. That's, it's, it's, a, it's definitely a happy tears because it, it's taken some time and a lot of work. And, and that's what I try to do is to try, to try to make things easier for people like us that go through things that other, other people don't truly understand. And that's that's my motive is to try to ease the pain in, in more of a spiritual way because I, I can't stop anybody hurt but if, if I can help somebody to smile then that that means everything to me but because I know I know how I, I feel during the times especially when you first find out something like that. Mm-hmm. And I know even beyond my illness is to just experiencing life. I know that sometimes you need to just like, uh, uh, what my psychiatrist used to call my happy place. And, and, and everybody needs a happy place. So if someone can, can just come to any of my platforms and mm-hmm. and and find a happy place there, then I, I feel like I'm I'm actually making a difference, and and that's why I cried. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you don't have to apologize, but I had to let you 
know that. And that's why I asked you, come on and tell your story because I have been watching you. And I watch a lot of people. And maybe I shouldn't say it, but you're a positive soul to me. Your positivity and your smile gets me every time I'm down. Thank, thank you so, so much. <laughs> it really does. But you have MS also, don't you? I, I do. How is yes, that I, to cope with along with the lupus? I, I, this is a newer diagnosis for me. I, I recently have been diagnosed with MS, and we have been blaming a lot of the issues on on lupus, thinking that that's what it was, until I finally got the, that diagnosis that I'm one of those rare cases that, that have them both. <laughs> and it, it, it's been a, a lot to adjust to. And, and yeah, we're we're definitely still in adjusting. I, um, I'm, I'm going to let my, my mom talk more with that. Okay. <laughs> because because uh, with, the, with 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 MS, I, I I've been experiencing uh, uh the um, the newer things that I find difficult to deal with. For, for one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I, I noticed that where, where with my lupus, I, I have prayers with, you know, the lupus with my prayers, it, it was something subtle. Like, I get nervous and I itch mm-hmm. really bad. But with MS, I, I guess it's prolonged so much of that now when I'm nervous mm-hmm. my my speech isn't the same anymore that's that's that's, a, that's something hard for me to deal with because you know I, I, I'm a public speaker <laughs> yeah yeah but you're still helping someone you're still helping someone let me ask you this also um, you started a brand new business, didn't you? Yes, ma'am. My son actually gave me my startup fee from his jewelry making business. <laughs> All right. Well, tell us about your your business. I I I hand make lashes, the strip lashes. And I, I also make the bonnet and the threads on nails by hand. And where can so I, where can somebody get your product from? I, I, I sell primarily on, on Etsy. I, I, I sell on Etsy.com slash shop slash Loopy Lotus Lavatory. Okay. And Loopy Lotus, what would you like the listening audience to know about you? How would you like, well, let me put it this way. How would you like to be remembered? Wow. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, I would like to, to be remembered as someone who helped bring hope to others. And what would you like the audience to know about living with a chronic illness. For those who are being newly diagnosed with this chronic illness, lupus, what would you tell someone newly diagnosed? I, I, I'll 
tell them what my mom told me. Once upon a time, lupus was looked at as a death sentence, and that's not the case anymore. You can still live. You know what? Go ahead. That's all. I'm getting teary out again. I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, girl, you don't. You don't have to be sorry. You don't have to be sorry. For all of my listeners, you can go to TikTok. You can find Loopy Lotus on TikTok. You can see her creating her lashes and her nails. You can also follow her on Instagram and you can also go over there to Etsy.com slash Loopy Lotus Laboratory and buy some of her merchandise and support this lupus warrior. Okay. I mean, everybody who is listening to me. All the way to the United States, to Kenya. Come on, support this young lady in her endeavors. Support her on social media. Support her Etsy.com store. And Loopy Lotus, my friend. I, I would truly like to thank you. For appearing on this episode of My Story Living with Lupus and sharing and telling your story of living with this chronic illness. I'm going to have to get your mother on, so tell mama to be ready to come on so I can um, ask her some questions about when she found out. Um, That'll be awesome. About she, she actually has she actually has a, a lupus foundation group here in our, our hometown. Okay, so what I need for you to do is inbox me her um, email information, and we can set something up. Okay. All righty then. Loopy Lotus, I thank you once again, my friend, with that beautiful thank smile. You. Just remember, you are blessed and highly favored. Thank and, you so much. And don't you ever forget that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'll be talking to you later, and I will be sending you a link to this yes. podcast, okay? Uh, thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. And stop being nervous, girl. <laughs> well, it's come to an end. Look. Go on over to Etsy.com and support this lupus warrior with a beautiful smile. Help her to make her business a success. Also, go on over to my story, Living with Lupus. Com. We have added new products in and we have an eyeshadow palette which consists of 35 vibrant high pigmented colors and you'll get 10% off of that by using the promo code PEARL10. Let me leave you with this. You know... The Bible states that God knows before we do what his plans are for us. And in life, you're going to have 
a crook in the road where you're going to have to deal with something and you have to recreate yourself numerous of times but you never give up no matter how hard it is yes I get down but I get back up to fight another day I don't give up this fight our dreams inspire us to live to the fullest our sorrows guide us in learning and accepting who we are wisdom is what we achieve from experiencing both The life you have left is a gift. Cherish it. Enjoy it to the fullest. Do what matters now. You know we have a past. That's why they call it a past. It's in the past. But it's what we do in between that makes the difference. I'm Susan Hendricks, your host for my story, Living with Lupus Podcast. I thank you so much for joining me. Have a peaceful, positive, and Oh, so blessed weekend. I'll see you next week for another episode. Well, it's come to an end. Look, go on over to Etsy.com and support this lupus warrior with a beautiful smile. Help her to make her business a success. Also, go on over to my story, livingwithlupus.com. We have added new products in, and we have an eyeshadow palette, which consists of 35 vibrant, high pigmented colors. And you'll get 10% off of that by using the promo code PEARL10. Let me leave you with this. You know, the Bible states that God knows before we do what his plans are for us. And in life, you're going to have a crook in the road where you're going to have to deal with something. And you have to recreate yourself numerous of times, but you never give up, no matter how hard it is. Yes, I get down, but I get back up to fight another day. I don't give up this fight. Our dreams inspire us to live to the fullest. Our sorrows guide us in learning and accepting who we are. Wisdom is what we achieve from experiencing both. The life you have left is a gift. Cherish it. Enjoy it to the fullest. Do what matters now. You know, we have a past. That's why they call it a past. It's in the past. But it's what we do in between that makes the difference.
I'm Susan Hendricks, your host for my story, Living with Lupus Podcast. I thank you so much for joining me. Have a peaceful, positive, and oh-so-blessed weekend. I'll see you next week for another episode.